Hey everyone, this is John Lai here from Social Media NZ. Welcome to another special interview series. And today we've got Rod Drury, hey John. who is the CEO of Zero. And you know, I just want to say on behalf of us, thank you for taking your time to you know come on, come and chat with us. So before before we start this show, what I would like to know, and what you know our audience would like to know, those who don't know what Zero is, would you mind explaining, you know, what is Zero? Cool. So uh, you know, obviously we're an online accounting product, but I think more than that, what we are is we're a good example of, of how we can build these next generation businesses uh, from New Zealand. So, you know, we've been able to, you know, off the back of some of the other things we've done, we've been able to, you know, um, raise almost $50 million, put a really good team, we've got 100 people now, and we're trying to, trying to build one of these next generation businesses from New Zealand, but absolutely serving the world. And so far, it seems to be going pretty well. Awesome. So it's the whole mentality of, um, you know, act locally, but think globally. Yeah, no, I think it's more than that. It's that, you know, under the old um, enterprise software world, yeah. you had to have salespeople racing yeah. around, and it yeah. was really hard. And it was difficult for us to build uh, sustainable businesses in that okay. space. So as you um, understood what happened in the enterprise software world, the way that you make money and grow is you normally take them up to a certain point, and then you hit the ceiling. And what we've done traditionally with our businesses from New Zealand is then we sell them. So we worked out there was this pattern, this R&D by acquisition yeah. type pattern mm -hmm. that US public companies had to come and buy uh, technology companies. Yeah. So a lot of the New Zealand software industry has got quite good at doing that. What's changed now with the web is, you know, the, is, is that now you can have a direct relationship with your end customers. And, um, and that means we can now uh, uh, grow these uh, absolutely global businesses. So our business model is we have about 100 people, 70 of those uh, down in our uh, development centre in Wellington. We write software, we install it up at Rackspace in the US, and there's almost no relationship between the costs of that and the number of people that can come and use that software. So, you know, it's, it, it's quite exciting. We're just starting to learn the, um, you know, the upside and the possibilities of doing this right. Wow, awesome, awesome. So back in 2006, you know, when you first, when you started Zero, um, cloud computing was there, but it's not as hype as it is, is it now. So, so, so you basically you were ahead, very ahead of the market. So what I would like to know is why have it in the cloud? Why have a traditional you know, business aspect in the cloud? Cool. So, yeah. from a um, from an end user user perspective, yeah. you know, it's it's um, anytime, anywhere, all of those things. Yeah. But from a from a from a sort of business perspective, what yeah. we realise is the old um, the old way of doing things, having installed desktop software where, you, where your data is on the local PC, whether it be at home or in the factory, um, uh, really really creates uh, these broken processes. So it's very expensive for business advisors to see the data, um, for your accountant to get the data. Um, you know they have about four or five hundred dollars worth of friction. So it's been really hard for small businesses to actually cost effectively get these advisors to help them with their business. Yeah. And we know that with an external advisor, you're more likely to do more with your cash flow, more likely to get that bank loan, more likely to hire a new employee, more yeah. likely to do some exporting. Yeah. So we were passionate that if we could um, get um, small businesses and their advisors working on the same bit of software and really look at, at, at saving a huge amount of time. I mean, what, one of our simple observations was when we first looked at what all small business owners did, we noticed they went onto their online bank account in the morning to yeah. see who paid them overnight. Yeah. And then we noticed they didn't process the data. So you've got this growing weight of transactions you need to process sometime over the weekend. So, so um, uh, it's Friday night, you want to take the kids to the beach for the weekend and you have to go and do the books. And we said, well, one of the differences in the cloud is now that we have um, at a central uh, at a data centre, we can go and do the heavy lifting. So the first kind of um, disruptions we did was connect uh, our um, accounting software to all of the banks. Yeah. And we found that was transformational. It was the first business process change that small businesses have had yeah. for probably 15 to 20 years. Mm -hmm. So now you go into your accounting system first thing in the morning, yeah. and the bank reconciliation process, you're doing a small amount of work every day, that's are your data entry, and you have this byproduct of being up to date um, every day. Yeah. And then the other businesses that I've done before, you had no idea what um, your cash flow was. You know, you'd be lying, 
been lying in bed at two o'clock in the morning and, and you look across at the um, at the CFO across the pillow and explain the bank now owns another wing of the house. You know, you really have no no idea. And what we've done is um, you know, by, by being on the cloud, getting these data sources coming in, uh, having a beautiful UI, you really have full control of your business and we save a lot of time. Yeah. But I think we're at the end of the beginning. The first you know, phase, first three or four years, was building the raw um, um, accounting engine, and that's just a huge amount of work to do, and we've managed to do that. And now what we can do is really move the category. So how do we leverage being online? Yep. So things like um, you know, everybody that uh, types in a contact uh, you know, creates these duplicated contact records. Mm -hmm. You know, we should be doing um, address verification, a single business number, so mm -hmm. you can pick the actual business. Yeah. We should be able to do uh, some real-time benchmarking. Uh, there's a whole lot of neat things we can do. Now we've got that core engine to really transform the category. Yeah. So, from a user's perspective, is it how how do you how do you educate the user in using zero? Is there is there a training system where someone you know when they join up, do they get put through a a webinar or, or like a Three steps process of you know starting starting your journey with zero. Sure. So so tying this into what's happening in the social media space, the big yeah. transformation. If you look at the the traditional vendors that have been in the small business space, it's not the tier one companies, yeah. and that's because the small business space is a huge. Uh, fragmented market. Mm -hmm. It's very expensive to sell into. So you kind of only had the B players playing. So what's happening now is if we're all connected, it, it allows you to transform everything. The business model transforms. Yeah. You, don't, um, you, know, you don't sell this through high street retail because yeah. you can't give half, half the box uh, price to the retailer because there's no, no large upfront fee. So we have to think about who are the new channels. Uh, we have to think about what's the uh, support model. You know, it's fine buying software for X, but if it costs you 90 bucks an hour to phone up somebody, that, that just kills it, right? Yeah. So right across the whole business, from the sales channel, through how you market it, through how you provide support, how you build um, an ecosystem, yeah. the web makes that inherently social. Yeah. So we try to think about, you know, um, about Zero is actually a communications platform which gets lots of advisors uh, talking to lots of small businesses yeah. um, and we're seeing a really healthy ecosystem develop around um, accountants, trainers providing support into yeah. that ecosystem. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we're using um, a, a YouTube style videos to educate, yeah. uh, we've got a whole lot of, sort of training aids and the help. So, so we really think about how do we get, how do we um, enable this uh, communication really, really cheaply using some of these tools that have developed on the uh, consumer internet over the last few years. Nice. So, so we have a rough, you know, the audience in that have a rough overview of what Zero does now. So let's move into the social media aspect of Zero. So, from a CEO perspective. What what is what, what's what do you think social media is, and where in your you know in your experience where do you see the new media moving into in the next five or you know beyond down the so Yeah, so so with, with these complex applications, and um, it's uh, they essentially are a referral model. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't buy it because you've heard. Um, a catchy jingle, you talk to a few people at a barbecue and they say, hey, I'm using this new thing and it saves me so much time. That's what actually happens. Yeah. And social media can um, amplify those things. And what we've seen is our um, evolution of it is moving quite quickly over time. Yeah. So, um, you know, I don't even know what we're going to be doing in six months. But to look back, say, at Twitter, when that first started, we put, um, we created a Twitter account for zero, put a badge on our website, and I think it was like, hey, here's an accounting system which has heard of Twitter. And that was kind of cool. Then the next thing we noticed, noticed was um, what Twitter gave us in using Twitter search is that we could see when our customers, uh, well, sorry, when our potential customers were pissed off with the products they were using. Yeah. So suddenly comparing that to a PPC campaign, mm -hmm. we had a, a much more qualified lead coming through at a, at a very, um, a, at a time where they were um, experiencing uh, frustration. So we used it, uh, so we got quite a lot of lead generation just by monitoring searches. But then what we noticed with Twitter was that um, people started to bitch and moan about their existing yeah. uh, suppliers. And uh, effectively what happened was the customer care queue for most large organisations um, is normally quite hidden. You know, you've got one person sitting on the phone talking to somebody and having a bad experience. That broke out through Twitter, yeah. so that suddenly customer care just flipped itself um, yeah. inside out. Yeah. And you saw the likes of Vodafone, ASB Bank, a number of those large corporates yeah. coming in and controlling the conversation. Yeah. So that, that was a fascinating change. Yeah. 
Yeah. And then what we find now is that Twitter is actually almost like a customer care channel mm -hmm. where we're able to respond, monitor the conversation, yeah. and uh, because we're providing good support and uh, we're listing, it effectively goes full circle mm -hmm. and it's on a sales tool now. Yeah. And we, uh, we just did our, um, our Zero conference down in Taupo. Yeah. And uh, so we, we published um, a hash the hash zero con tag. Yeah. So while we were going to the conference, during the conference, and even my father, who uh, you know obviously follows what we're doing, he was saying, oh, I watched the zero conference where we yeah, were yeah. staying, it was fantastic. Yeah, so, so. And we had people from the UK going, hey, it's going quiet at ZeroCon. So the reach of these events, you know, we had 220 people in Taupo, yeah. was spread all around the world and people were sort of getting the message. So, you know, it's just changing so quickly and it's yeah. amazing. You can now have a direct relationship with all of these end customers. Yeah, so, so where do you see it you know, what, like, where do you see it going to? Do you see a new tool coming in that will help Zero in terms of, you know, getting more personable with the customers and your investors as well? So where do you, where do you see the space moving into? So, so what I see now, the really big thing that's happening is the traditional uh, distribution stack has changed. Yeah. So before, if you were thinking about exporting to the US, say, you'd be, you know, at our stage of life, we'd be trying to find partners and that sort of stuff. Yeah. But, uh, and there's a lot of vested interest in preserving those old channels, whereas what social media are doing is allowing you to build brand, build mm -hmm. things in a, yeah. a guerrilla, influence the influence type yeah. way. Yeah. So we're just working out you know, how, to, how to make that work. Yeah. But the, the, the huge impact of it is you can now have these non-traditional ways of attacking quite significant markets yes. at a really um, transformational cost price. So I think the smaller companies like ours, the challenges completely get it. But if you're an incumbent not playing with social media, it's like your worst nightmare. Yeah. You know, because you've got these startups that can create brand and personality without spending a huge amount of money. Yeah, yeah. So it's a very interesting transition in the uh, technology space. Yeah. And for the first time, you can build technologies, um, you know, global technology businesses uh, from countries like New Zealand. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah, I know. yeah it's, pretty, it's pretty wicked how social media has allowed, you know, countries like not only New Zealand, like Malaysia, Singapore, where we their voice can be heard where they put their things on social media, the world knows what they're doing. So it's such a great tool, especially for business perspective as well. So, yeah. so on, on zero, what, how do you guys use social media? Um, and, and are there any like stories that you can share basically from a customer and support perspective? Yeah, so, so we use social media pretty extensively from having a blog. When yeah. we first did an IPO, we did a blog app, but we didn't um, allow comments because we were probably a little bit paranoid about what was going on. Yeah, yeah. And but as we got more and more comfortable, it's like no, no, our brand is and our values is to open things up. Yeah. So we like you know what we think about you know uh, blogging is all about starting conversations. So our challenge is not to make it you know just broadcast about us, but how do you actually start a conversation? Mm -hmm. I don't think we're doing that to the best that we possibly can, but we're having we're definitely growing a fan base and all those things. And over the next year, we want to be much you know much better at starting a conversation, becoming a venue for conversation. And that's kind of interesting. Yeah. As I've explained. Um, this, the, the way we've evolved our use of Twitter, um, and that just c continues to evolve um, uh, as well. What we're also doing is we put a lot of work into our, uh, our directory, mm -hmm. so that's kind of a you know kind of a non-obvious uh, social thing. Yeah. But what we've found is because we're doing some of these sort of um, uh, this piggyback marketing with large brands like yeah. Telecom, ANZ in Australia, Telstra in Australia, yes. and British Telecom. We, we are um, creating lead opportunities, not just for us, but for our partners as well. And so having a directory on the side of accounting partners and other zero mm -hmm. solution partners drives uh, lots of new business to them. So we're seeing, uh, you know, again, um, quite a lot of change in, in these business uh, relationships and these valuable uh, ecosystems. So, so what, um, what we're doing around our, our API is kind of interesting as well. So. We've um, tried to make it really easy for people to connect to Zero. So as you're, you know, taking the um, uh, the golf management system and moving that from a Windows application to the cloud, yeah. you don't have to build accounting because because we've already done that. So so we, um, you know, our strategy there is to make it really easy. So we're the, the we're the we we are the uh, default general ledger they just use. Mm -hmm. So we even have a community around our developers with user voice. Mm -hmm. so they're telling us what features to work on. Yeah. And then how do we get to large pools of customers? So we don't expect someone who's already got you know, a few hundred thousand users to necessarily talk to the Zero API, but we can reach out and talk to their API, and then we can be in their forums talking to their customers about how their software works great with our software. Yeah. So we think about it in those sort of terms as well. Yeah, so 
what what's interesting to know in terms of of social media is internally. So is is there something like your a, a Yammer or something like being used in yeah in Zero? Yeah, yeah. So you know you've probably seen on our blog we um, yeah. you know we're huge fans of Yammer. And, uh, you know, so we're, you know, so the dynamics of our organisation, we're, you know, 70 odd people down in Wellington. We have a sales team up here in Auckland where we are today. Uh, we've got people in Brisbane. Uh, we've got an office in Melbourne with 10 people there. Uh, we've got people in Sydney. We've got people sp uh, s uh, spread through the UK. And um, one of our objectives over the next few months is to open up an office in San Francisco. Oh, awesome. So it's easy to keep the culture in the sort of, um, in uh, the dev centre. But our guys in Sydney, you know, haven't even been there. Yeah. So what we've found through uh, with Yammer is it's become kind of like um, uh, the water cooler. You know, yeah. just all the humour, the things that are going on as people are finding good websites and um, you know, interesting things are happening, it's all going through there. Yeah. So we use Yammer for um, non-critical conversation. So yeah. uh, if we, you know, we do send messages out to all through email still if it's an important message we want people to read. Mm -hmm. But for those things where you want to come in and see the stream of consciousness. Yeah. So um, you know, what I do is encourage our salespeople if you're, um, you know, if you're out on the road, yeah. take a photo of where you're at, and what it does is it shows the dev people, we've got real people out there using our software, wow, and, and you know, earning a living based on the work we do. Yeah. And that's been fantastic, you know, when I go up to the UK, you're driving around with, um, uh, with our team in the UK, and mm -hmm. we feel like we're really good friends, because yeah. we know each other's humour through this, um, uh, through Yammer. So, so Yammer has basically acted as that medium for, for basically all Xero offices to come together as one massive, yeah. massive office. Yeah, for all Xero staff. So, oh, yeah. you know, I, I live in the Hawke's Bay now, so I yeah. do, do a few days a week in Wellington, usually day in Auckland, then on the, on the planes every uh, three or four weeks. Yeah. And, um, you know, that allows us to have this uh, sustainable lifestyle where I can break away from the office, give them time to do some work, and I, and I actually get a day or two at home, I can drop the kids off at school, yeah. and actually do some work. I found I was doing yeah. no work in the office when I was there, and I was yeah. just stopping work being done. Yeah. So that, that being virtual was part of our value system. We wanted to um, create a virtual environment so that the senior people in the team with kids can live where they want to live and yeah. have that sustainable quality of life. Yeah. And then you have these intense periods when we're all together, usually on a Tuesday, yeah. um, you know, doing all the planning and, and, uh, and work we're doing. Awesome. So um, you mentioned about uh, zero getting an IPO. So, you know, zero is a public listed company and also has that kind of startup feel as well, that, you know, that fun environment to be at. So, with social media, how does zero thread that line of being official and, and casual, especially on social media? Like, how, how, do, you, how do you monitor? Yeah, so what we've done is, is, as a public company, and the reason we did Zero as a public company was we, we figured we wanted 50 people, 50 people for three years while you build your revenue. Mm -hmm. uh, 50 people is like 500 grand a month, so we would need about 15 million bucks. If we had have um, raised that as a traditional VC route, we would have had a valuation of 17 and been sold by now. Yeah. Um, so we were able to tell a big story and raise the money to do things properly, and that's worked out well, thank yeah. goodness. Um, and because and, um, we're a bit different, we can do things differently. So one yeah. of the issues you have, or one of the uh, characteristics of being a public company, yeah. is continuous uh, disclosure. Yeah. So as material events happen, we are mm -hmm. obligated to inform the market. Yeah. So we've flipped that around, so we, we have always um, done that, yeah. uh, and we do that on our blog, and so we'll have the official stuff we need to do, but we've taken the strategy of being very open and sharing the story, which again uh, creates good fuel to get the, for the social media to... Um, uh, to keep going as well. Yeah. So, so being really into social media and being really open actually works quite well as a public company. Oh, great. So how do you, how do you know, how, do, how does a team at Zero identify who to blog on, you know, on, your, on, on Zero's blog? So um, we try to get everyone to blog and you kind of learn your training wheels. You know, we had a few howlers from the team, but you know, everyone kind of learns. Yeah. You know, it's not the end of the day. Yeah. You're trying to get so many people to to come to your site anyway. You know that uh, the other side of that is it actually doesn't matter sometimes. Yeah. But um, you know, we try to sort of um, spread it around. But I, you know, we do have to go through. There's people who are natural bloggers, and they'll come forward. And there's people who, you know, it's the hardest thing in the world. So. Um, uh, you know, we try to push it around as much as we can, but it's you know the challenge is not making it just about us. Actually, trying to make interesting things that you start conversations, so your customers and partners uh, treat you as a venue for conversation. Yeah. We think that is uh, successful blogging. Yeah, awesome. So now we're going to head into straight into Twitter and Facebook. Yep. Well, we we we, um, we tweeted out we Facebook saying that you know we're interviewing you today, and you know if there's any question you want to ask them, this is the opportunity. Sure. So um. I'm going to quickly fire you some question and then you can answer it in the way you want. Cool. So we've got Twitter, you know, we've got a user from Twitter called DoubleWorks and he asks, you know, he wants to know 
what's the compelling reason from switching from MYOB to you guys? If you've used MYOB, yeah. go on to our free trial on zero and have a play, and you'll see straight away. Fair enough. Awesome. And the next one, and I, I personally like this one is, as well, is Peter Tew. Yep. It's coming to you know, faith, Facebook um, and PayPal investor. He's coming to New Zealand. What does that mean for local startups and also for the NZX as well? So, what, what, what yeah, does so, it so what's happening? That's yeah. so quite a big question. What, what yeah. I've found is that all of the senior guys in the world are, are um, in New Zealand anyway. You know, I always, um, when I'm going through airports and you see a jet coming in, put the tail fin numbers in, yeah. and it's stunning. Most of the tech guys in the world have some sort of relationship with here. And in the past, we haven't uh, connected with them, mm -hmm. um, but uh, they're, all, they're all down here. So we can almost have this uh, magic golden ticket where we can connect to these people because they have a strong affinity with being down here. Yeah. But it was really cool. We went, we went to see the social network movie, and then when they meet, went to meet Peter, yeah. and we looked around the team and said, we did that. You know, we, yeah, we yeah. had a good two hours, and I'm back up there... Um, uh, next week, catching up with all the guys in That's San great. Francisco as well. So, you know, we can do this stuff. That's great. That's awesome. And, all right, lastly, to finish this interview off, um, you know, we always like our guests to give a parting value word of advice. So, you know, what are some of the word of wisdom that you can give to those who want to start something for themselves and get to the level of what you've started with zero to become this big entity? So is there... Is there a word of advice that you Yeah, want sure. To well, I wouldn't say we've, we've smacked it out of the park yet, but, but, yeah. it, but it is looking pretty good. Yeah. So, so the, you always hear about the stories of the guy that you know, you know, got lucky really early and quite young, mm -hmm. but much more are repeatable is doing things in a series of steps. Yeah. So, you know, this is my fourth company, and each one gets sort of bigger and bigger and bigger, but yeah. you're gaining more experience, you're gaining more networks. Yeah. So I think it's really important to, to get started is to get started. Yeah. So it doesn't matter what the deal is with an angel investor, you know, give them 40%. Get the money to get started. Give them a great return, yeah. you know, and then that gives you the right to own a bit more of the next one, and you get you know a slightly bigger deal. Yeah. So get started a series of baby steps, and uh, and the journey is the fun, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, once you, once you have young kids at home, you don't you know it's much easier being at work, yeah. and uh, actually building a great team and and building a sustainable career. We enjoy doing doing what you're doing, is is pretty cool, and and, and you do have time to do it. Great. So thank you for taking your time off today to talk to us again. Thank you so much, Rob. Thanks, John. In joining us and all the best, you know, for your company. I'm sure that you obviously make New Zealand proud. So thank you so much thank again. You. Awesome.